This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn something new every day for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to sign up at brilliance.org slash HAI. Welcome to Sesame Street, or whatever. Today's lesson is that if you don't got good grammar, don't be writing legal documentations because these require specificity. Exhibit A. Title 26, Chapter 7, Subchapter 3, Section 3, Subsection F of the American State of Maine's Laws. Subchapter 3 mainly has to do with the overtime work rules in the state. Basically, any hours worked over 40 a week have to be paid at 1.5 times normal hourly pay, but subsection F contains exemptions to this rule. Now, let's play spot the ambiguity. The overtime provision of this section does not apply to the canning, processing, preserving, freezing, drying, marketing, storing, packing for shipment or distribution of agricultural produce, meat and fish products, or perishable goods. So wait, wait, wait. Is overtime exempted when packing for either shipment or distribution, or when packing for shipment or the distribution of? If it's the second, then anyone distributing these things, for example, truck drivers, would not be granted any overtime. This sentence is just begging for a good old-fashioned American law. Suit. Now, lexical nuance is tremendously important as single characters can have tremendous consequences. Here's approximately three examples. In the UK, public information on incorporated companies is published by Companies House, a government agency. In 2009, Companies House, as they do, published that Taylor & Sons was going bankrupt. Only problem, Taylor & Sons was a thriving engineering firm that existed for close to 150 years and employed over 250 people. Taylor & Son, on the other hand, a completely different company, was really going bankrupt. It was just a one-letter misspelling. All of Taylor & Son's customers, though, saw that they were closing up shop and stopped doing business with them, which caused them to actually go bankrupt. The owner, of course, sued the UK government and reached an undisclosed settlement of probably millions of dollars in 2016. The lesson learned? Have more sons because when it's a family business, it's not child labor, it's chores. Example, dose. In 1962, NASA launched Mariner 1, a spacecraft that was going to go say hi to Venus. At the time, most NASA computer code was written out by hand and then, once complete, transcribed into a computer using punch cards. Only problem, humans suck, and one of the meatbags forgot to enter this tiny overbar when transcribing the spacecraft's guidance system. Now, I'm no doctor, but the internet tells me that the lack of that overbar caused the spacecraft to overcorrect for velocity variations, which led to the spacecraft going wildly off course, which led to NASA giving the Soviets a big W in the space race. Now, NASA is all about having the public embrace its technology, but a few minutes after launch, this spacecraft was on course to give some Americans too close of an embrace. The guy in charge of the big red button pressed the big red button to make the spacecraft explode. If you're wondering, this meant that it didn't get to space. The cost of this transcription mistake? $150 million. That's more than the average American makes in a year. Example number C. Back in the early days of the United States, the government figured out that it needed money in order to do stuff, so it started to impose tariffs on imports. After the Civil War, this problem of needing money to do stuff became even worse. Because of war debts, of course. Therefore, they updated this document outlining American import tariffs. One edit was in a section of exemptions, one of which was fruit, plants tropical and semi-tropical for the purpose of propagation or cultivation, meaning fruit could enter the US tax-free. This was a mistake. It was meant to say fruit plants, as in the plants on which fruit grows. The US government tried to enforce the intended meaning of the sentence, to which fruit importers responded with some lawsuits, and in the end, the US government lost and was forced to refund, adjusted for inflation, about $40 million in tariffs, which accounted for almost 0.7% of the entire national budget. The lesson learned? Categorize your fruit as musical instruments in order to get lower import tariffs. But back to Maine's modern day comma snafu. Oakhurst Dairy is a company based in Portland, Maine that produces and distributes milk, which, based off testing, I can confirm is a perishable good. Therefore, the company looked at this sentence and figured they didn't have to pay overtime, while the drivers looked at the very same sentence and figured they did deserve overtime, so five drivers sued the company for their either rightfully or unrightfully deserved overtime pay. The drivers and company went to trial and the court said no. The drivers didn't deserve overtime pay because look at this sentence. It very clearly lays out an exemption. The drivers appealed, the case went to an appeals court, and then the judge dropped this thick 29-page ruling analyzing the single sentence and eloquently saying to the drivers, fair point, you win. As a result, Oakhurst Dairy had to pay about $5 million in overtime fees. They did win a partial victory though, as soon after, Maine dropped a few of these bad boys into their laws. Semicolons. The good news is that, unlike the grammatical heathens and the rest of the English-speaking world, most American states now require the Oxford comma in government documents to cut down on ambiguity.
Now, learning that using only one comma in a list of three is a primitive relic of a time when we threw buckets of poop out the window is easy. Learning multivariable calculus, though, is tougher. But for that, there's Brilliant. Brilliant has mastered the art of teaching complex topics through active learning and problem solving. One of my favorite features of theirs is the Daily Problem series, where they publish several math, science, and engineering problems every day to teach you something new, and then, if you want to learn more, each is attached to one of their courses. Head to brilliant.org slash HAI to sign up for free and access some courses, and then, by being one of the first 200 to use that link, you'll also get 20% off their annual premium subscription to learn anything from vector calculus to gravitational physics.